Hey guys, it's me, Cam. This morning, I was thinking to myself, you know, what's the most, like, toxic, most degenerate deck I could I could make, or I can bring to locals? And, uh, and it hit me. I was like, oh, dude, I have Eldritch cards, and I also have, uh, floodgates oh you want to you want to activate a monster effect no no you no you don't you don't get to do that you want to summon more than one monster no no you, you can't do that either yeah i don't know i just thought it'd be kind of fun to do a lot of people are kind of saying that uh deck's not really good this format so i'm hoping to anticipate that so people don't um build against it and hopefully can catch people off guard because everyone's building against uh despia brave uh prank kids etc so uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes today. Today's Sunday, so uh, we got some, uh, we got a good turnout, and uh, looking forward to getting started. So just some context on what I'll be playing today for those who are unfamiliar. I am playing a pure Eldritch deck. There are only two important monster cards in the whole deck, and that's it. And the rest is filled with trap cards, as well as a few other spells to allow me to draw more cards, as well as a, a few additional monsters, such as Lord of the Heavenly Prison. The main strategy of this deck is to pack this deck with as many trap cards as possible and stall out the opponent long enough until you're able to get out your big Eldritch the Golden Lord monster and beat them over the head with it. Either that or annoy your opponent long enough with all your trap cards to the point where they just get frustrated and just surrender because they don't want to play the game with you anymore. With that explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the first match. So first match we're paired against Richard. Uh, Richard is this guy, he comes to locals every now and then and just completely destroys everybody. Getting paired against him first round definitely sets my morale relatively low. The guy's really skilled and he plays very well, rarely misplays, so uh, this one's going to be tough to play against with just a pure Eldritch deck. Never won a match against Richard, but I can't be going to the first round with a losing mindset, so I try to play as best I can. Uh, I just start off by activating Eldland to add Conquistador to hand. Activate Black Awakening to summon out Eldritch, Hello there. and then I set three cards and pass my turn. In Rich's main phase, he goes ahead and activates Rite of Aramisir, and after he gets his token as well as Faithful Adventure, uh, he special summons out Water Enchantress from hand. I go ahead and chain Conquistador to summon itself and destroy Faithful, so I can at least stop him from searching Griffin Rider and Draco back. And uh, after that, some time passes before Rich then decides to tribute both of his monsters and sets a level 7 or higher monster from his hand face down. And then he sets one card, and then that's it, and then he, he just passes his turn. And at this point, I'm just like, holy shit, I might actually win. I'll do your trap, your face down swallow trap. All I've got to do is uh, get rid of that face down card and summon up my second Eldritch this turn, and then I can win. But, uh... <laughs> he, uh... He just go ahead, he... Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, so uh, in response, he chains Super Poly. So uh, this fusion summons a monster to his side of the field using monsters from either side of the field as tribute. Uh, and also, I cannot activate cards in response. So I have to say goodbye to my Eldritch, unfortunately. Uh, the, the card that he brings out is Masquerade the Blazing Dragon. This card is super annoying. Uh, this card basically deals 600 damage to me whenever I activate any card. So I just summon out Eldritch from Grave, um, mill Hakero off of uh, Chris Eldon's effects, and then I attack his dragon to get that off the field as soon as possible. Uh, and then I just uh, activate Hakero to set uh, Sanguine and pass my turn. So um, I guess Rich has another turn to come back. So this man activates Foolish Burial, and this one card can send Despian Tragedy to the Grave, which then can add Aluber to the hand. And then when you summon a Luber, you can get Branded Fusion, and then when you play Branded Fusion, you can summon out this guy, and then this guy summons out that guy. And then I just lose, because the only Floodgates that I have in my position, um, there can only be one, and goes a match, can't do anything right now. Even after a little bit of struggle to activate Conquistador to destroy one of his cards, uh, he just chains another Super Poly, so uh, this dude... Just back to back super Paul with me, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like, this match is over. Uh, I struggle for a bit, uh, but then realize I'm just running down the clock against a board that has me dominated in the long run, so I just scoop and I just move to game two. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, in Giraffes. I'll play a non fusion area. <laughs> Okay, so uh, just a quick little explanation as to what happened. Uh, game 2, I sighted in non-fusion area, which is a continuous trap that prevents either player from fusion summoning as long as his face-up card is on the field, and dimensional barrier, which is an amazing card and prevents my opponent from fusion summoning as well, and he destroyed both of them. <laughs> that was like the only useful floodgate that I had uh, against this match. No skill drain. No rivalry of warlords, um, nothing to prevent him from fusion summoning monsters, and uh, that's just his whole deck, his fusion summons. I only drew my main Eldritch cards, which you know got immediately destroyed the moment I set them, because he was able to get out Guardian Chimera off of Branded and Red, which destroys spells and traps, and Mirror Jade again, which also banishes cards I control. <laughs> so unfortunately we get clapped by Richard yet again. But you know what? We got paired up against Sword Soul next round, baby! This deck absolutely shits on Sword Souls. Like, every single card I own in this deck, uh, in this goofy-ass deck that I'm playing, crushes Sword Soul. So I start out by activating Black Awakening to summon out my Eldritch Monster, but he negates it with Ash Blossom. I then set four cards face down and pass my turn. In standby phase of George's turn, I activate Anti-Spell Fragrance, so now he can't activate spells unless he sets them on the field first and then uses them during his next turn. He then brings out Moyi, and in response, I use the effect of my trap card. There can be only one, which prevents George from controlling more than one monster of each type, and since his entire deck is filled with worm monsters, which is usually the typical build for this deck, he's only able to control one on the field at a time and cannot perform combos, he can't go into his extra deck, and he's forced to just have the one monster. So on my next turn, I just erase it uh, using Dogmatic of Punishment, destroying his Moyi, as well as one of his other face downs he had set. He then summons out Ghost Spell as well as Long Yawn in desperation to use any two monsters in order to special summon a Synchro Monster. But unfortunately for him, I activate my second Floodgate called Gozen Match, which restricts George into controlling monsters of only one type. And now he's stuck controlling only one Worm Monster of one type, and that's it. And since his Long Yuan is too weak to do anything on its own, we're just now both stuck in this instance where we're just continuously passing turns until I drop my Eldritch card. So this footage I'm about to present to you, this is peak Yu-Gi-Oh gameplay. Like this is this is what this is what Eldritch Deck is all about. Rough baby. Is. Stand by man. Yeah. Pass. And there's no comment. Pass. Alright. Draw. Pass. Draw. I'm gonna pass here. <laughs> Draw. <laughs> Thinking here. Yeah. Pass. Draw. Pass turn. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> What are either of us supposed to do? He can't even link it off. Oh my god. Pass, dude. Ooh. Alright, draw. Alright, so I, I finally drew my Eldritch cards uh, after that exchange. And it's at this point where George just concedes here not long after because there is literally nothing he can do. Like, I had to get rid of one of my floodgates to get the monster out, but I had so many, I just drew so many more to replace it. Um, I have essentially just won by uh, forcing my opponent not to play the game. And that's pure Eldritch for you guys. <laughs> Ooh, pencil? Ghost? Alright guys, so game two, and this time George is going first, and by the looks of it, he's trying to get his board set up as quickly as possible so I don't floodgate him immediately like last time. He brings out Baronet de Fleur, which can destroy spells and has an Omni Negate. I activate Lord of the Heavenly Prison to try and prevent him from destroying any traps or spells that I set this turn, but then he activates Baronet's effect to negate it. 
So now that Baronet's one negate is gone, I can then activate Eldritch from hand to send Baronet to the grave, and then set three cards, and then activate Hakaro in grave to set Sanguine and pass. In George's standby phase, I activate Dogmatic of Punishment, in hopes of destroying his Monk of the Ten Yi, as well as another card of my choosing, but then he chains Sword Soul Blackout, which can target one worm monster that George controls, and two of my cards I control and destroy them. So after he chooses Monk to be a target, in response to that, I chain Compulsory Evacuation Device to bounce his Monk of the Ten Yi Link Monster back into his extra deck so that Blackout no longer has a target, resulting in the trap failing and getting sent straight to the grave. He then normal summons out Ecclesia, and then uses her effect to send herself to the grave in order to special summon out a Sword Soul monster from deck, and then in response to the activation, I chain Gozen Match, locking George into Light Monsters, and since there are no Light Sword Soul monsters in his deck that he's able to get out, the effect does not resolve, so he's forced to go into battle phase. I activate Sanguine to try and defend myself, but then he ends up using another Ash Blossom, so I can't get it out, so I do take 2800 damage, but that's okay, because during the next turn, I pick up Black Awakening, and then activate Eldritch and Grave in order to special summon my second Eldritch. And from there, I have pretty much just won. George knows that I'm able to just kind of one-shot him if I'm able to control both Eldritch monsters on my field at the same time, and he just concedes with that knowledge. And with that, we have secured a win for the second round. Hey guys, it's me again, Cam. But uh, from the future this time. Unfortunately, for the last round, the footage was lost, but uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of recap as to what happened. We got paired against Adam. Uh, Adam is really, really skilled player. Uh, he got 8th place at the regional from the last video, the San Jose regional. He ended up finishing 8th place and he used that deck against me today. It was a Despia deck with uh, some Edgem Scythe and uh, Patchwork. Um, and I just got obliterated first game, no surprise. Second game, however, I got my non fusion area in there. I got my dimensional barrier. Um, I didn't really see any of them, I honestly. Um, but it was a good match. Like we were able to break down each other's uh, boards a little bit, use up a bit of our resources each, and then uh, it got to the point where I was about to have the upper hand, and then he just hard drew into Alibur and summoned it, and then he was able to get Brand of Fusion, and then I had a Dimensional Barrier face down. I chained it. I was like, mm mm, that's not gonna happen. The next turn he just hard draws another Alibur. And then just does the same thing, and I don't have a, I don't have anything to stop it a second time. So he's able to get the advantage from that, and uh, I lose. But uh, it was a good game. It was fun. I had a fun time that day. Aside from that, uh, I got to play for, with uh, Kevin's dog for a bit. But yeah, uh, that's the end of this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think about the videos. I'm trying to figure out like what kind of style of videos I'm wanting to make for the channel. Um, if you guys prefer like shorter, more condensed content, or if you prefer like longer versions of the video where I kind of explain things and, and go over my process of thinking, or just kind of a balance of both. Um, trying to figure out the sweet spot. Uh, so if you guys have any feedback, please let me know, honestly. Uh, it's a lot of fun to make and I just want to uh, make the the best kind of content that I, that I can. Uh, so. Uh, with that, uh, I wish uh, you all a great rest of your day. Very excited for the next video. The next video is going to be really, really awesome. So, thanks guys. Have a good one.